something new and exciting. A second keynote. We've never done this before at an NLUUG meeting. So we did, we did have to do something special. And we invited a grumpy old hacker. <laughs> um, but a special one because, well, if you are able to gain access to his phone, then you will probably find some numbers that are very, very interesting. Uh, and hopefully the fails from the trenches are not about that. You never Edwin. know. <laughs> no, I never know. <laughs> Edwin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> so, nice to be here. My name is Edwin. Um, Dutch or English? English? English, English. Okay, we keep it in English. Welcome to the closing keynote. I know I'm before the bar, so I will try to rush. Um, a little bit of warning. I have 112 slides, so... <laughs> But let's go and we'll see how it goes, right? Um, small warning, I fly a lot for my work and I got a cold once uh, and then when you go in a plane and you get out of a plane and get into a plane, etc., you keep the cold. So if I cough, excuse me for that, I will try to do it this way. Right, anybody under 15 in the audience? No good, because some slides are pretty scary. If you have nightmares, maybe tonight contact the organization. I'm not responsible <laughs> for stuff like this. Who am I? Edwin, um, 1970, so pretty old for a lot of people. Pressed a lot of buttons when I was younger. Are there any hackers in the room, by the way? Raise your hand. One, two. Oh, good. For the people who don't think they're hackers, have you ever changed some numbers in the URL and pressed enter again? <laughs> Thank you. So, all hackers here. Good job. Good job. Uh, played a lot with the old modems in the time when there was no internet. Uh, how many of you remember those? Whoa, brilliant. That's the time when you downloaded 28 Windows floppies, and at floppy 26, your mother took, picked up the phone, and then everything was gone. That's the area where I'm from. Uh, it's also where I met a lot of interesting hackers from when I was 13 till about well, 20 or whatever. Um, and what I always wanted to do is get all those hackers in one room. Just get them all in, drive in a car, a washing machine, a website, it doesn't matter. You will get it back broken, but you also know where your problems are. And that's what we're building with ZeroCopter. I'm not going to tell you much about it, but then you have a clue why I'm doing this. Um, basically, what I'm doing now is this. Just flying a bit around the globe, meeting all hacker friends, meeting corporate CEOs who are also very weird sometimes. So this is my, my life at the moment. And in my free time, I'm doing this. I'm a member of the Guild of the Grumpy Old Hackers. Uh, in Dutch, het genootschap van de gekke oude hackers. <coughs> and what we try to do there, <coughs> excuse me, is help kids who are um, basically getting into trouble because they downloaded something they shouldn't and are talking about that on the internet and try to steer them in the right direction. So if they find a database and they want to shout about it, we say you can also report this. You can also help the company get better and help secure your own data, basically. So that's what we do with the Grumpies. With the cavalry, we help medical device manufacturers, automotive manufacturers, and we try to get them to be a little more secure. And those discussions are really, really bad for us sometimes. A couple of years ago, we had one with a car manufacturer where we were able to take over a device that controlled steering, and we said, this is the problem, you should fix it. And they say, yeah, we know. And we're like, well, if you know this, why don't you fix this? And they said, well, there's no law telling me that I have to fix it, so why should I? Uh, and if I have to fix it, I have to bring all my cars back to fix this, because I can't do this remotely, and it, it will be way too expensive. I won't fix it. And it was, so, No, I cannot tell you. And then we said, what if we kill somebody while taking over your car? And they said, well, we just pay the deceased family. It's a lot cheaper. And those discussions are really, really hard for us. So if you know good lawyers or whatever and you want to help us, please look up I Am The Cavalry. Um, oh, yeah, sometimes um, stupid shit happens to me. I was at CCC, maybe you know it, and I got an uh, email message saying, 
uh, I'm inviting you for blah, 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 and I'm looking forward to welcome you in Amsterdam, the State Secretary for Security and Justice, Klaas Dijkhoff. And I was like, Ugh, I don't want to go. But I had to go because, oh, it's nice. And then something really, really, really bad happened to me. And I have still nightmares from that part as well. I had to wear a suit. <laughs> yes. It was fucking horrible. It was really horrible. If, in the end, if you like this presentation, please Google the lady in the middle, by the way. Her name is Mary Mo. In Dutch, you, you write it Marie Mo. Um, she hacks her own pacemaker. And that's really scary. She got a pacemaker once, uh, and then when she went up the stairs, she fainted. And it turned out that the pacemaker was wrongly programmed, that if her heart rate was above uh, 120, it failed back to 60 because of security. And if you walk up the stairs, your heart rate goes up 120, 60, boom, you're down. <laughs> so what she's doing now is hacking pacemakers. And why? To make sure that if she dies, we can look in the logging of the pacemaker and we can see if it was her pacemaker or her own body. That's the only reason she does it. And it's really funny. I, I've been in a hospital once with her, and she was lying there smiling. And then the doctors tried to get some information for the pacemaker, and they were all like, what's that? There's nothing. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. And she said, ah, sorry, played with magnets, blah, blah, blah. So really cool. <laughs> Try to find out that stuff. All right, who of you knows the NCSC in the Netherlands, the National Cybersecurity Institute? OK, they're uh, responsible for all, all our major cybersecurity issues. They also have, um, I'm sorry, I didn't say that. They also have a conference every year, which is really awesome because they invite very good speakers, a lot of friends of us, and we wanted to go there in 2013 because friends of us were speaking there. And we as the hacking community weren't allowed to get in because well, no hackers. And what we did is we organized our own conference on the same day, very close to their conference, and we had a van picking up the speakers when they were done, bringing it to our conference, spoke there, really cool, really awesome, um, and they were very pissed about it. <laughs> but, but, two years later, we were there on stage. And for us, that's pretty important. It means that slowly we as hackers are getting out of the darkness and trying to get a little bit into the light. And why? Because we want to help you all. And that's the idea, and that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit in the end. But first, you're here for Phil's, right? Right. Cool. Phil. Now, I have one question to ask. Who of you works at Centric at the moment? <laughs> Nobody? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then I can tell this story to everybody. Let's talk a bit about experts. Um, a time ago, I think it was one or two years ago, there was a problem in the Netherlands because banks were targeted by DDoS attacks. So a lot of you had issues with that, um, and the media was, of course, on top of it because it was cyber attacking our banks, and it was probably China or Russia or whatever. It turned out to be a guy who bought stresses on the internet for five euro from his attic somewhere. But, okay, the media was on it, so they needed experts. And I myself was called as well. Um, I don't like this, but at RTL Late Night, they have free beers. So, okay, <laughs> I was there. Um, and while we were sitting there and talking about DDoS and attacks, et cetera, our phones kept buzzing. And we looked at it, and there was on the channel, the other channel, on uh, NPO AIM, there was also a news item, and there was a lady talking about the same item as our item. And she turned out to be Rian van Rijbroek. Yes. Mm. And she was telling some stories that people found weird. So we looked a bit into her. And it turned out she wrote a book, uh, a really good book about cybersecurity and cybercrime. But she also stated that she was world's best hacker for over 30 years. And that's a bit weird, because um, we know a lot of people in the hacking community. Hans even knows more, because he's a lot older than me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and nobody knew her. So that's weird, because the community is pretty tight, so we know each other, and nobody had ever heard of this lady. So, okay. So, yeah. She was very good, very good, or not real, so we don't know. Um, one of the examples was this one. Uh, she was talking about networks that should be separated physically. 
So you have a network of an energy plant or whatever, and then you have the internet, and if you work there, you should have a physical separation. How do you call that? Air-gapped networks. She called them air-bagged networks. <laughs> we don't know. She was also telling about this. Uh, every hacker has an app on the mobile phone, and if they walk onto an ATM, they press a button and money comes out of the ATM. I was like, whoa. Well, you don't? I don't. I don't. I asked some friends, do you have that app? No, nobody heard of it. How do you hack an ATM? You need a drill. It's true. You drill a hole, then you plug a USB key uh, in the USB port, which is beneath the front portal, and then you can insert malware, but I'm not telling you stuff like this. <laughs> Luckily, she had a, a solution for all these problems. She had a solution for hackers, she had a solution for DDoS, she had a solution for everything. Do you know what it is? <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Unfortunately, nobody has ever heard of this and still now don't, but whatever. She reminded me, however, of one guy, and I'm not sure if you know this one, but please look him up after I'm finished. Guy Goma. Do you know this one? Yeah. Everybody? No, come on. This is pretty good. Okay, I will tell you for the guy shaking no in the back. Um, guy Goma was a, a guy in, in London, I think, and he applied for a job at the BBC as a cleaner. And he was sitting in the waiting room for his job interview, and then somebody ran in and said, is Guy here? And Guy stood up, and Guy followed the lady, and Guy came on TV at BBC talking about Apple iPhone security for 10 minutes. <laughs> it was fucking brilliant, so please look this up. It's really, really cool. So, that was fail one, let's do another one. Um, I organized a lot of fails, and um, I'm not sure if you guys are working with government or not, but if you do, you get probably a lot of invites for public-private partnership meetings, right? No? Good, you're lucky. We got 28 last year, and uh, they all say, can I have your data? Basically, that's what they want. But I got an email, and it was this. TLP Red, conversations are always, um, always non-binding and in the first instance mainly for introduction and orientation. As an intelligent service, we prefer to meet in a neutral public place such as a restaurant. <laughs> Me in the next slide. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> but I went there and it was even worse than I expected. Brilliant people, nice phone numbers. In the end, what they wanted, basically, the same, can I have your data? Because you're working with hackers and we are very interested in what you do. So I said, no, you can't, but we can discuss about other things. I said, for instance, if you want something, how do you do it? How do you get some passwords? And they said, yeah, it's difficult for us as police and as intelligence and blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, but you can look at data breach databases like, for instance, have I been pwned, you know, and you have the LinkedIn database. I'm sure you all know in 2013 LinkedIn got breached and the database is constantly reiterated for passwords. So if you find somebody in there, chances are that they still reuse their password or a variant and it's very easy to do that. So I said, you can just use the database. And they said, no, we can't. I said, why not? You can download it. Everybody can download it. You go to Google, you type link in database, you press enter and you have the database. And they say, no, we have chain of evidence. So that means that you have to either raid the house and find the database there, or we have an informant handing the database over to us. And nobody did. And I said, <laughs> that's fucking stupid. You know, the database is huge. So I was invited to talk about on the DEX police conference, which is digital crime investigations, blah, 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 1,200 police security officers there. And what I did is I offered a USB key to the head of cyber police, the Netherlands, Theo van der Plas, or Theo Plas, I'm not sure what his name is now. So I offered this and he stood up and I was pretty scared. And they were as well because they thought I was giving them this. <laughs> Does everybody know what this is, by the way? For the, for the people who don't know, it's a, a kill, kill, killer USB disk. You put it in your USB port and it loads a power, and then when it's full, it blows it back in the motherboard, so your motherboard basically explodes. 
it's a lot of fun, it's 50 euros, and what you basically do is that you put finance on it and you place it in the parking lot of your competitors. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really cool. But he accepted, and in the end, I got a hug, you know? <laughs> on stage, from the head of police, and I tried to get his gun, but it's pretty, <laughs> pretty secure, pretty secure. All right, another fail. Uh, who of you are in security? Just raise your hand, okay. If I say to you, you should focus, do you agree or don't you agree? That's a difficult question, right? Because you're now scared for, for me, right? <laughs> but normally, focus or no focus when you're in security? Focus, uh, focus, no focus, 50-50, okay. I say if you're in security, focus is bad, really bad. And I have an example, uh, of course, a little bit of a fail. Um, there was a hotel chain, and I'm not going to say which one, um, uh, and they had something new. They had, when you checked in the hotel, they had developed an app on a mobile phone, and you get via email your room key. And then via NFC or Bluetooth, you could open your hotel door with the mail you just got and the keys inside. And they said, this is new, this is exciting, we should celebrate this, so we invited press, a lot of press, and we invited some hackers, and we're making a media day of it, and hackers can try to hack this setup we have, and then the press can show that we're pretty secure, and that it's really awesome, and you don't need badges and cards anymore, and really cool. So I came there, because they invited me, and that was basically a mistake, um, and there were four guys in suits sitting behind the table and there were some hackers working already and I said, what is the goal of this challenge? And they said, well, we have made an app and we think it's pretty secure and you go in and you get your email and then you can check and we think it's all fine so you can hack it and blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, but what's the real challenge? And they were a little bit puzzled and they looked at me and they discussed and then said, well, we made an app and, and the same story. I said, for me, the challenge is to get into the hotel room, right? And they said, yes, that's, that's the idea. I said, that's cool, because I thought about that and I brought a 75-kilogram uh, fishing magnet, I put it on the lock, I twisted it, and I was in the room. <laughs> and they were like, that's not what we mean. I said, that's exactly a problem, because we hackers are a bit lazy. Why should we reverse engineer a mobile app for three weeks when we can walk in with a magnet? And then they say, please go away, you're not on TV, bye. So, I was gone. But that's the idea. We think a bit differently than most people. Who of you have a Tesla? Cool. Who of you want a Tesla? Look under your chair. You never know. It might be a lucky day. Probably not today. Uh, it's great, a Tesla, because it drives you everywhere if you put on the auto drive motors. But the problem is you have to touch the steering wheel every two minutes. To fix that, you can just put in an orange. <laughs> The problem is, they fixed this now as well, so the new version of this is you have to have a small hook with a bottle of a bit of water dangling on your steering wheel and it drives you from here to wherever you want. Really, <laughs> really awesome. While we're at cars, by the way, what's this? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a trap for a self-driving car. A self-driving car can get in because of the cut lines, and it cannot get out because of the <laughs> cut lines. <laughs> yeah. And you're all laughing now, but wait till you have a car like this and your kids have crayons and get this picture. You know? There you go. Another feel. All right, let's do some access feel, because Hans and I like to toy with locks and stuff, so access is always the thing we know. Oh, we need to have some audio. Can I put it in? <coughs> I'm sorry about this. I'm way too lazy to think about stuff like that. Not for now, but it will come. Uh, easiest way for us to access, walk with the smokers. But nobody smokes anymore, so it's difficult. So what we have to do is just get in dumpsters, get out papers, passwords. Uh, lately, we found a lot of cut uh, entry cards. So you have the NFC RFID cards to gain access to the building. They cut them, but the chance that you cut the chip is not that big. So if you can just make a loop again for the antenna, then you're in. It's really, really cool. Um, also one, um, yeah, we call it in the Netherlands, it's, it's first aid, bedrijfshulverlening, you know? What we do is we look up, because mostly on the website it says in charge of BFA is, and then some names. 
We look them up on Facebook, we wait till they get on holiday, and then we go to the desk and we say we have an unannounced drill in uh, submission of the guy who is now on holiday. He told us to do it now because nobody will expect it. And then the, the class go, okay. And we have a guy with a burn <coughs> on his arm and he had an accident in the server room. And nine out of 10 times you are led into the server room. You put in some USB, you lay down, you get a Band-Aid and you walk out again. Try it, it's, it's really, really cool. <laughs> then we have a lot of buildings, of course, with the gates. You know, you go in, you have to press a lot of buttons, get cards, get security checked, etc. But if you go out, you don't. So, what do you do? Wiggling. There, there we go. go. Thank you. It's that easy. Just magnetize metal stuff, etc. This, what is it? What is it? It's a practice lock. Yeah, we like lock picking. And lock picking to learn is sometimes difficult. So you have practice locks like this, which are see through, so you can see the springs and the buttons, and you can try, you can practice, etc. Where shouldn't you put a lock like this? Oh no, you have military base, for instance. <laughs> it's a bit of a fail, but people do. And I was at a wedding once um, with a good friend of mine, uh, a lot of good friends actually, and there was one saying, I can walk into the bank at night with whiskey. And we were like, nah, he can't. And he said, if I succeed, I get free drinks for the night. And we were, we're at a wedding. Yes, you get free <laughs> drinks for the night. So we filmed it. So we're locked, but there is a rack sensor up there. <laughs> Free drinks. <laughs> it's that easy. There's a sensor in there who gets body heat. So alcohol, evaporation, a bit of signal, door opens. Very easy, very fun. While we're talking about this, you're now in a bit of security mindset. Which lock would you guys choose to be more secure? Would you choose lock number one on the left or lock number two on the right? It's not a trick question. <laughs> two, right, two, one, two, why one? Ah, yeah, okay, okay, but let's say that ain't the case. It's a very good one. It's a very good one. I will, I will map in another key. <laughs> They're really easy to pick, yeah. So then I'm wondering, when we enter a building, why are all your keys behind lock number one? It's so stupid. When we enter, the, the easiest pickable lock in the building is the lock with all the keys behind it. <laughs> stupid. And yeah, and you guys say, okay, we, no matter, we have tags, right? Now, the fun thing for us is cloning tags. And yes, we sometimes sit hours on toilets to wait till somebody drops their pants to clone a badge. We do that because it's fun for us. And if we have good machines, we buy this, the Boss Cloner Premium Kit. It's a bag with antennas on the side, 10 cards, different frequency, mobile app, and you just stand close to each other, you say clone, and it tries to clone everything it can find, and then you can just pick one card and walk in. Really awesome. Only problem is it's like 1,500 euros. Ah, it's a lot. So what we also have is this stuff. This is $20, <laughs> and it's from China. So don't plug it in. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it has security, by the way. It now asks me if I want to use this for criminal purposes, please press cancel. <laughs> uh, brilliant, right? So I have a hotel card. I will try if you can hear this. Read success. Ah. Card number is 6871881. Cool. The button below there is right. So if I have an empty blank card, I can now clone this. $20, a lot of fun. Try this shit. Oh yeah, this one, I, ju I just, this is so much fun. We have an office with hackers, because yeah, we have a lot of hackers. And we got a new coffee machine with cards. Well, 
the guy was installing it. We asked for a card. Before he was done, we found out that if you get one cup of coffee, then there's a small change in some bites. So now everybody at our offices had unlimited coffee. <laughs> it's very easy. There you go. It works. Brilliant. We also tried because there's a display to put words on the card, you know, so not numbers, but like hello or whatever. And then the machine crashed and they had to come in to fix it. So <laughs> don't, don't do stuff like this. Little Phil. All right. What is the ultimate weapon for hackers out here? Mensa. Yeah, people. Your mouth. You're all good. I would say this one. The phone is still most brilliant. And if we combine this with caller ID, you can do really amazing stuff. And I'm not sure if you know this. This is the social engineering toolkit from Dave Kennedy. Um, it's a framework you can set up, and it will set up web service. It will set up all the stuff for you to hack somebody. And I've got a little example from my friend Dave. He's very happy, of course. So I will play it for He's you. what's known as a social engineer, or a people hacker. His craft is to dupe you into doing things and sharing information you probably shouldn't. Can I just get your, your, your credit card number? Some use it for illegal activity. In David's case, companies pay him to find out if employees are leaving the company vulnerable. He and his team show us how it's done. Step one, spoof his number so it looks like he's calling from inside the company, and then call tech support. Hello, you there? Hello? Hi, this is Ken. How may I help you? I was wondering if... Uh, you can uh, take a look at a website I'm trying to get to. It's for a uh, big customer thing I'm working on for Monday, and uh, I can't seem to get to the website from my computer. Sure, uh, what's the website? I'll see if I can get to it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate the help. I mean, it could be a stupid thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really stuck with computers, but uh, uh -huh. so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's www. Survey. That's uh, s u r v e y. Dash pro. Dot com. Yeah, I got a prompt to open. I uh, just clicked open, and I'm at the site now. Here's what the IT guy doesn't realize. By clicking that link, he's just given David full access to his computer. Uh, yeah. Whoa, okay, that's weird. I just hit it, and it works. It seems like it's working fine now. Awesome. Well, I don't know what you did, man, but I really appreciate the help. Uh, hey, no problem. That was easy. That was it? We're on that his computer right now. You were able to take take over this this guy's computer within, I would say, like, under two minutes. Under two minutes, yeah. Under two minutes, took over his entire computer. And, and think of it as not just his computer, but it's pretty much a downfall of the entire company. In this case, the company was paying David to hack them and see if their employees would fall for it. Easy, right? And with this tooling, it really works. Try it. It's really cool. So how do you get passwords when you're, once you're in a network? What's the most used tool? Come on, anybody? I buy you a beer. Oh, no, it's free beers. <laughs> No, 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 no. There's software for mostly Windows networks, which we try to run. It's called Mimikatz. You know it? It sniffs a lot of passwords. It gets access to some old databases, etc., to get passwords. But you have to install software. You know what's way easier to get passwords from people? Asking. Asking. This. <coughs> this works. <laughs> Try this. People actually fill this in and are very happy that you offer them to help to change the passwords. Smart. It really works. I really like the comment. Yeah. Come, come see me, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Please, don't do this, people. Don't do this. All right, another fail. Um, social networks, etc. I was bored one time, so I tried a little scripting with Twitter Scraper. And I just searched for card and number is and blah, 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 blah. You think I got results? No, right? Yeah. Yep. This one was nice. Uh, mm, uh, it's about a customer card, a net card, which seems pretty big in the US. Uh, and then um, they ask for something, and they say, what's a DM? Like, send us in DM. What's a DM? Here's my card number. <laughs> pretty easy, pretty specific example. Again, please DM me your ID number, custom number, smart card number, et cetera. And Raymond says, my ID is, my custom number is, my card number is, and I want to change my paying name. Do this every week, and you will be surprised of the stuff you find. It's really, really scary. This one also, they just directly attack a bank. Please give me a waiver for 40K and split it on my card number, blah, 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 blah. People do this. Why? And then you think this is bad. Now it's even worse if they put pictures online. <laughs> Why? 
I have a new card, this. I always think of them as the, the ultimate colleague, you know. If you have a good colleague but isn't good at accessing computer, I always picture this next image. Yeah, but you saw <laughs> Go back. Go back? Yeah, it's, it's not valid without a signature. This one, no, 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 it's not valid. <laughs> but you can use it. Brilliant, brilliant, another fail. All right, we are in the bug bounty business, so that means that hackers from around the world, we, we chose hack for our clients, but we also do a lot of responsible disclosure handling. I will come to that in a minute. Uh, but that means that anybody from around the world can submit a vulnerability. So that means we have clients, they have a responsible disclosure statement, and anybody can submit something. This goes wrong sometimes, like this one. We get this one a lot. I have to warn you that you have TCP 3128 open. And now I think I'm at the right conference to ask you, what's this port number? It's the proxy, yes. This is their internal proxy. <coughs> and they're saying it's open, it's really brilliant. So we always send this one back. <laughs> yeah, please hack yourself, really cool. This one, Schubert Philips, uh, I'm don't, not sure if you know the company, pretty big, very nice. Uh, they got a, a message as well. Uh, with an attached screenshot, so that's very good. And they say, if an attacker suggests username and password or found it, they can enter it on your site and they can create users. Uh, fix this. Okay, so this basically means I found a portal. If somebody can log in, they can do something. That's correct. <laughs> really cool. They also forgot that there was uh, two-factor authentication in there as well, but they don't care. You get a lot of these really annoying messages. This one we get also, then, then it gets a little more technical. They try this. I want to warn you, you're vulnerable to CV number, blah, 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 blah. Looks nice, right? So you check it, and it's PHP mailer below 5218, remote code execution, while we are running a Ruby on Rails app. I always think of these people as like a bit of like this, but <laughs> maybe not so very nice. This one should be good for you guys. Uh, open source, due to improper configuration, the following directory is open and the files are listed. Yes, yes that's correct. Because we think that it's intentionally left like this. People try everything to do this. It's really, really scary. And then the responses we get sometimes are even worse. I've, I've got some of the most nice ones. This one, really cool. Somebody has uh, mentioned to Uber that something is not applicable. Uh, and then uh, Uber says, well, this is not a bug. And then the reply from the guy, you beep, as beep, beep, uh, out of scope, but blah, 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 blah. And then he says the worst you can say to somebody from Uber. <laughs> Bloody beep, beep, taxi driver, really cool. And also support, guys, this one I love the most, the best response. So everybody knows what cross-site scripting is, right? I hope, yeah, pretty cool. Somebody reported an XSS to a guy, and the answer we got is brilliant. It looks like you're trying to add JavaScript in the name of the gallery, which isn't possible. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't put code in my fields, because it's only for letters and names. Thank you, <laughs> bye, don't fail. And then we have the big corporations. The big corporations who do bug bounties, who do responsible disclosure, but are <coughs> basically not wanting to talk about this. And for responsible disclosure, a lot of guys use this as their resume. So they find a bug and they report it and they wait till it's fixed and then they want to talk about how they find the bug because it's good for them, you know? You get creds if you find good bugs. But some companies are more like this, get off my lawn, don't publish my bugs. And for instance, this one, Jonathan, uh, Bauman uh, supported the bug to a company, um, yeah, we shouldn't basically talk about it, but if you guess it, it's okay. So they're doing stuff with chairs and closets and they have very big stores everywhere <laughs> and, and they're a bit yellowish and, and you can eat their very cheap Swedish meatballs. So <laughs> do you guys have an idea? Yes? If somebody says it, I can click on. Thanks, IKEA, correct, yeah. So he scanned a bit of IKEA and he found some interesting servers. For instance, this one, the bathroom planner. And in the bathroom planner, you can select what you want in your bathroom. And then in the end, you get a PDF with all your setup stuff. 
So what he did, he went in between the selecting and the PDF creation, and with Burp, he catched the result coming out. And he decoded it, and he saw that there was a lot of text in it. It was just base 46. Uh, and then he thought, what if I insert something in this request? Then maybe I can get more than just bathroom stuff. So he tried. Uh, and first, he just, just <laughs> image source HC <laughs> password. This didn't work quite as well because there was a little minor issue with, with quotes, etc. So the second one he did was create an annotation file instead of the image source. Um, and this works because now you have there in the header your passwords from your server. <laughs> it's really cool. IKEA didn't like this so much. In the end, they fixed it. And then it took them, I think it took them a month to fix it. But then it took them six months to allow for him to write this. And that's not the idea. If we help you, please allow us to do stuff, you know? Hug us like you mean it. That's basically the idea. We try. Then we're going to basically some other random fails. Please, people, don't be stupid. Why are we building stuff we don't use? Right? For instance, this, what is it? Malware. Malware. <laughs> It's Amazon Alexa. Um, and do we use it? And then somebody says, yeah, we use it. No, we don't. You say, Alexa, how's the weather? Alexa gives you the weather in Fahrenheit. Why? I mean, she should say, look outside, you moron. That would be interesting, you know? <laughs> but she doesn't. In the US, they use this to order their groceries. So they say, Alexa, a mode of milk. And then Amazon Prime comes next day, milk. Brilliant. We are forgetting that we have animals. Like, for instance, this parrot who ordered 20,000 rolls of toilet paper by saying, Alexa, I'm out of toilet paper. And then I was last doing this presentation, and then somebody said, I don't believe you. I don't believe that this parent can do this. Well, we found a video. Alexa? Oh, my God. OK. OK. Yeah, he even does the OK. This works. This works. And who of you would like to have a LinkedIn connection with your toothbrush? <laughs> I don't. But we are building this stuff. Come on, people. Why? In, in the old days, everything was... Hans? Vroeger was alles beter. That's... Everything was better in the old days. And I have a picture now. I found it and I almost cried. It shows this in one picture, this sentence. <laughs> it's so sad. Every day she tried to feed the drones. Every day. And I talked to her and she was a bit of a criminal because she tried to extort some people uh, by saying, if you don't pay bitcoins, you get a DDoS. She did this. <laughs> And you know how she did it? Just like this. And this is true, by the way. I actually cannot show it, but we scrambled some things. But this happened in the Netherlands. Somebody sent a letter to a big company saying they would DDoS them. Like this. <laughs> really cool. Really cool. And the lady knows that she doesn't need to pick up USB keys from the street because they're all like this, right? She knows that. But she doesn't know that she cannot use the charging cable of her daughter because there's typically stuff in the charging cables as well nowadays. We build tiny stuff that we could use to take over your computer. And then people say, ah, this is hacker stuff. No, you can buy it on Wish with a SIM card inserted so you can now remotely see what somebody is doing on your computer <laughs> if they use your cable. She doesn't know that researchers have found ways to hear pixels change via a microphone now and put this in AI so they can basically map out what happens on your screen if you have this shit installed. It's scary. Yeah, 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 cool, right? Yeah, I love this shit, but it's very really cool. So, okay, we did a lot of fails. Uh, we need drinks, so how are we gonna fix this? Well, uh, I'm doing a lot of talks uh, around the world, and I'm always starting like this, you know? I'm from Holland. Um, we are tulips and windmills, and we are very good in water management, so we are proud of this. And then the audience looks at me and, uh, and uh, I said, what now? 
you're not very well known for this. Okay, why are we well known? Yeah, you're well known for this. <laughs> this is how they see us. They see us as this, the land where everything is allowed. Well, it isn't allowed, but police looks the other way, so it's basically allowed. So this is allowed. And I did this in France two years ago, I, I must tell this every time, in a big movie theater. And I was done with my talk, and then people came up to me, and I thought they were willing to chat about the company or whatever. And they said, can you put, please put this slide back on? And there were four French guys staring at the screen like this. <laughs> <laughs> really, really awesome. But this is allowed, not allowed in the Netherlands. Hookers, allowed, not allowed in the Netherlands. Hackers, allowed, not allowed, allowed in the Netherlands. And we worked very hard to get this allowed, allowed, allowed. Only problem is the media. Because if you type in Google and you say, give me an image of a hacker, you get this. Yeah. I never wear a ski mask when I'm behind a laptop. No. No, I don't. You do? No? No? Oh, awesome. We sometimes do, because hackers like pizza, yeah, we can't help it, so we sometimes do pizza eating contests with ski mask on. It's messy. <laughs> really messy. We wear hoodies, but mostly because we work long hours and it's easier for us to get the food. That's, that's the reason to wear hoodies. Now, we worked with government a lot to do this responsible disclosure. And for me, this is very important and I have to talk about this. In 2013, we got this uh, with the uh, National Cybersecurity Center, the policy for arriving for, uh, at a practice for responsible disclosure. It was very, very cool. We had to change the name in 2018 because uh, in um, responsible disclosure, the pressure is on the hacker. We have to be responsible in what we do and how we submit stuff, etc. We now change it to coordinated because we think the company who gets the report also has to do some stuff. So that's why we changed. And there's an official government document. You can download it. It's really cool. There's only one big problem with the document. They have a picture of me in it. <laughs> I really hate this. Um, how does it work for us? Responsible disclosure statement on our website. Very simple. If you, as an attacker, can download my entire customer database, don't. Just download two records to show that you can and then quit. And then give us a report on how you did it because we love that. And what we do is we discuss with you and if you adhere to these rules, we will not prosecute you. That's responsible disclosure, working. People are reporting stuff to you. And sometimes you get prizes. You know, the Dutch government gives you T-shirts. I hacked the Dutch government, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Nice, we got like hundreds of those. Um, but what does the Dutch Federal Bank give you? A gold bar. Really, really cool, you get gold if you report something there. And the day this hit the internet, the next day they had 1,000 responsible disclosure reports. <laughs> Everybody tried. And they played it very well, because it was a USB key in the end. So props to them. Very nicely done. Do you know what the RDW gives you, the Dutch Road Tax Administration? Brilliant. I love this one. I hacked RDW and all I got was this lousy license plate. We called them up. Can I put this on my car? No. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. But we dream of this stuff. We want to make the world more secure as hackers because our data is everywhere and we want to help you. And that's why we also started ZeroCopter where we do research programs where we pay hackers for the bugs they find so they don't have to do weird things. We help companies with responsible disclosure. And basically all because of a dream, because I actually have a big dream, and, and this is basically it. If I look at my network of hackers around me, about 10% is doing responsible disclosures everywhere. They just want to help the world get more secure. Then you have still 30% espionage, you know, China breaking into factories to get ideas. I think we'll never get rid of those. Then you have 10% activists. We still use that because everybody has the right to demonstrate, so activists should be there. 15% script kiddies, so kids wanting to learn how to hack, downloading tools from the internet, pressing enter, waking up, owning three servers, no idea what they've done, put a dancing pig on there, oh cool, nice, but a lot of issues for companies. And then we have 35% criminal hackers, people making money from hacks. When we talk to 
police and OM, district attorney or whatever, public prosecutors it is. When we talk to them, we learn a lot of those criminal hackers aren't criminal hackers by nature. A lot of them are kids, like 13, 14, 15, sitting in the basement, trying to hack, finding a database with, for instance, credit card information. Now, they know they cannot use the credit cards because it's illegal and they will get arrested. But you want to talk about it. So they talk to their friends, their peers say, oh, I hacked something and I got a database with credit card information. And then, in the end, a criminal hears this and comes to them and says, you know what, you cannot use this. I will pay you two to 3,000 euro for that database. And then you're 13, 14, 15. Whoa, that's a lot of money for something I cannot use. Here you go. You have the database. Not thinking about the fact that criminals, after a week or two weeks, will come back and say, I want another one. But I don't have another one. Well, then we will try to harm your sister or your family or whatever. And a lot of kids are rolled into it that way. So what if we can help those kids? For instance, if you say you find a database with credit cards, report it. You get money from the company if you report it. You have never to look over your shoulder because criminals are hunting you. You are doing a good thing. What if ideally we could do that? And the 15% of script kiddies, we will train. You know, come to us, come to you guys. You will train them how to find ethically, how to use hacking tools in the proper way, how to help companies. If that works, and I know it will never happen, but try to, to dream with me here for a second, then 60% of all the hackers on the internet would be on the good side. And I think then we don't have any problems anymore. And for this, we work with HackRight. I'm not sure if you heard of it. It's basically something new where kids who committed a first offense in cybersecurity and hacking are basically getting a halt straf, as we know it in the Netherlands. So they're not, being, not going to jail, but they are being shipped to cybersecurity companies like ours. And they have to work with us. They, they have to learn how we work. And they have to tell to the people where they had the problem, what they did. And they have to see all the consequences that came from that. And it's basically a new way of punishing where we try first offense to steer them back in the right direction together with public prosecutors, police, and reclassering. I have no clue what that is in English. <laughs> oh, whatever. So this, probation. probation officers. So try this. If you have a company where you can have room for people to do this, just go to the HackRight site and, and, and list yourself. We have, I think, 20 companies now who, who vouch for this. But the more we have, the more people we can help and the more talent we can grow from that as well. Because the people we had are now all in cybersecurity and loving it. And, and it works very well for them. So let's go to drinks. Um, before, you have to remember this. We don't make holes. We find holes which are already there. And we love to talk about this. If you keep that in mind, then we are friends till the end. And I would just say, keep calm, hug a hacker, have a great time, and drink something over there. <laughs> Bye. Any questions or drinks, indeed? Drinks, drinks, drinks. 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 <laughs>